So we have a sleeper fight for this weekend's little fight night going on. And that is Mr. Dan Ige taking on Bryce Mitchell. Dan Ige, you know, he's on a nice little win streak now since, uh, you know, he had a little rough patch, you know, losing to the Korean Zombie, losing to Calvin Cater, or Calvin Cater that we're going against right now. Oddly enough, this guy chose random and ended up getting Cater, so good luck on his part. But Ige, one of the more solid four stars in this division, very crisp boxing, and we're going to be looking to try to use that. He's also a pretty, pretty good MMA grappler for the most part. He can hang. With just about anybody in this division not named Volkanovski, Holloway, pretty much the top tiers. But you can still do some damage with them if you play the right way accordingly. So, trying to kind of stand my ground with Ige as much as possible. Alright, there we go. Land some good work to the body. Back on out the way there. And you know, with, with the everything, all the news with regards to... Uh, UFC 5 and everything, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing the trailer, seeing some new models there, seeing all the newer stuff, animations and everything else along those lines, and of course, I'm really excited with uh, the new system on the ground that they're kind of showing us in that gameplay reveal trailer, and there's news of a deep dive coming out sometime this week, and ideally that deep dive will be before the beta, so I'm really hoping that that, that comes out in due time. But, Mr. Dan Ige, he was a very good addition when he got added to UFC 4. You know, Featherweight was kind of feeling a little bit too stale. You know, not too many other options other than the big, you know, the big three. But it's good to have viable four stars that when played under the right hands, you know, if you get somebody like Crooks 209 or Goat 1099, they're going to be able to work with guys like Mr. Dan Ige here. Alright. Trying to work the clinch on us, but we'll do a right ride back. And he's up against the cage. I don't know. Yeah, let's go. Let's shoot. I don't know. I don't know why I was inputting that for a takedown. You know, that's that's not a, a traditional takedown input. I don't know why I was uh, thinking it was something else. You know, don't know what could have make me think that. But back here on the ground, it, like I said, one of the biggest issues I have with the ground on UFC four, even in UFC three, where UFC three that ref timer is one of the worst things ever. Is just there's not really an incentive to keep on moving, right? Because Usually, once the guy gets denied, it's pretty much a wrap from then on out. And you, nobody really wants to move, right? Unless you're playing offline, it's very difficult to feel confident moving on the ground. Especially after you've been denied. So, ideally, something with this new system, I'm hoping that it encourages a lot more movement for players when they're going against each other on the ground. But, you know, speaking of the groundwork, you know, we're in mount. Doing as best as we can. And we're doing our work here against Mr. Calvin Cater. Now, against Bryce Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell took a really bad loss to Ilya Tupuria. Insist that he was kind of sick. And... Alright, thanks. But he insists that he was kind of sick or whatnot. Wasn't the best version of him. So, for Bryce Mitchell going against Ige, it is uh, super necessary for him to get this W, right? Like, he definitely needs this W. But... I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see because that was like the first bit of adversity that we saw Bryce Mitchell have. I mean, when Bryce Mitchell beat uh, Edson Barboza, I was like, fucking hell. Like, he beat Ed freaking Edson. So, this guy's legit. Because Edson's like was a clear, you know, top 12, top 13, 14, 15 guy there in featherweight. And, you know, matchup-wise, he'll do pretty well. And also, the win against uh, Andre Feely was another one that really caught my eye too, Bryce Mitchell. So, Bryce Mitchell going against Dan Ige after coming back from his first professional loss. That's that's interesting. You know, that's very interesting. But I've showcased Dan Ige before. It, was, it wasn't too long ago that I was able to showcase Ige. Again, I also get some nice little clips for the TikTok, too. I can see where this guy's trying to take the fight. Trying to get me to some little meta exchanges. So, nope. No slip hook for you. Grab him. See if we can pass. Oh, and yeah, and one thing too, like, I've opted to, for the new guys who already don't, you know, it's their first time watching me and whatnot, I always generally opt to pass guard and try to get some damage off in the next position because the ground and pound, although it was like a cool nifty idea for like UFC 4, um, I'm not a fan of the fact that they just, you know, it, it gives somebody one chance to kind of slip a strike 
and they're able to reverse position. It would make more sense if you're going against a Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt or the stamina is really low. But I always felt that the requirement for that isn't really as strict as it should be. And it's not really rewarding actual good timing. It can pretty much reward somebody who's just wiggling their stick. And, you know, and then, and then they're Gucci. But, whatever. Body teat for the knockdown. Hopefully we can make this a quick one. Eh, probably not. That's cool. We're going to run all over the backside. Yeah, but for Dan Ige, I think the, the win against Nate Landwehr, he's got some vicious, vicious knockdowns. Like, vicious knockdowns in that fight against Mr. Nate Landwehr. There we go. Got didn't grapple as much as I thought he would have. And boy, did he, he showed out pretty, pretty big there. So, I want to see if there's going to be any uh, grappling change between the two. Of course, uh, the thing too with... Um, in the four losses, in like his four recent losses with uh, Danny Ige, Mosvar Zvloyev, who's a top 10 guy at Featherweight now, like his grappling was a problem. Josh Emmett, it, was, uh, it came down to the power discrepancy. Like Emmy just had a lot more power, even though Ige was moving extremely well. The I felt like like Emmett's power almost cheats him against certain fighters that I don't really feel that he's better than. And it was to me that's why I kind of felt like the case was there. It's almost like uh, when Josh Emmett fought Shane Burgos, like Shane Burgos was styling on uh, Josh Emmett until so he wasn't, and saddened me because had uh, had Shane Burgos won that fight. He would have got added to UFC 4. So, so it always sucks when like somebody you want to see get added. They have their like pivotal moment to win a certain fight. And then they don't win it. And then you're like, fuck. That sucks. Well, going for the gilly gilly. Fortunate time ran out there. Yeah, then he also got he got blessed with a really good uh good model for division two. Like the, the combinations, especially when he's stationary, they flow really, really well in comparison to a lot of other fighters in the game. So I, I do like that. The idols, I tell you, it's so the fighter idols are one of the most important things when it comes to competitive play. But we're gonna chill here. We're not gonna get too overzealous. Don't want to risk trying to force a finish. You know, Ige showed a lot of ah oh, for fuck's sake patience in his most recent victory against that late uh, Nate the Train. Landwehr, right? So we're gonna try to show a little bit of that patience ourselves. Mm. Mm hmm. Try. <laughs> okay. Heck, power powers through there. I think one thing too. I really think with uh, regards to the striking in UFC three and four. One issue that's always been really prevalent has been um, the sliding. And it's not necessarily like the range closing for a couple of strikes. It's more so like the conservation of momentum where if you commit forward on one... Oh, fucking hell. Oh, we're still rocked. I think he knows that. Just on defense for now. But when you get guys like they're pressing forward... They're able to maintain distance and still fire off at pretty close to similar speed when they go forward. That's why, like, the one-two and how fast they're able to back up after they throw it is such an issue. Or just general uh, strikes in general. When you see with the head kicks and body kicks, those the laws generally apply there aside from um, some of the more busted stuff. But based on the footage I saw in the gameplay trailer, it doesn't seem that they've attacked that issue with the gliding just yet with the strikes so i probably i'd like to propose something along those lines i probably i want them to maybe try to increase the frame penalty like how long the strike is in frame especially when you go forward because a lot of players tend to get away with and that that's that includes like myself like there's certain things that you have to almost bypass certain things in reality to make it work in the game and I think that the more that the game trends in a realistic direction, the better it will become for the general player base, especially with um, the new addition of this TBS system and everything else along those lines. So uh, I like it that it's focusing more on transition-based transition grappling as opposed to, you know, the minigame. 
I'm, I'm really excited for that change because, you know, I'm trying to get a submission now. And that guillotine is tight, and this guy just quit. This guy just quit. Okie dokie. I guess Homeboy just wanted to quit. So, that's going to be our one and done. We got a couple more fights coming up for this card. You know, I uh, I think the Karate Hottie, Mr. Michelle. I said Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Michelle Watterson Gomez is fighting this weekend too. So, we'll try to get a showcase for the Karate Hottie as well. And who else is needed? Of course, we got Fazeev and Gamrock coming too. So, that's going to be it for today. I'm Rest 17. I appreciate y'all. I'm out of here.